Hello everybody, it's the Alco Diesel guy again, and as we see, we're looking at my DCC system, which is an now outdated DCS200. No, no, I'm not upgrading it, but there is something else I'd like to upgrade on this device itself. <clears throat> it's, well, these controllers. I've had an ongoing love-hate relationship with these things. I love the fact that you can control two trains on one throttle. I don't like the fact that if you drop them, well, they basically shatter, and I have tried everything, including putting in pockets, and I still managed to drop them and have to send them back to DigiTracks to repair them, and it's starting to get a little annoying. I know I could do this myself and repair them, but still, I don't know, it's just a pain I like to deal with. I'd like something a little bit more durable and maybe a little bit easier to come by. I also would like to go to wireless controllers, but that's a whole other expense in itself. To start with, I'd need a wireless version of one of these controllers, which would cost $200 by itself, and then a wireless panel, similar to this one, that can output what's called a duplex signal, what Digitrax calls. This is to say, the simplex, you just plug, you can plug it in and basically set it up for one train, but then if you want to change locomotives, you have to go back to your panel, plug it back in, and change the engine. The duplex would allow you to change those on the fly, utilizing the system basically anywhere you'd like and basically be anywhere you'd like on the layout and change them without having to plug back into this stupid panel and just use the engine engine as you normally would nice little advantage to that but again expensive because the panel itself costs something near two hundred dollars that's quite a huge investment four hundred bucks and that still only gets me one controller and one wireless device now Digitrax has come out out with a new way of approaching this there's been this new craze as everyone has noticed by controlling your train model trains with cell phones and it seems to be a, taking over part of the hobby digitrax has responded by coming out with this particular device to more sophisticated shall we say dcc systems as the we have to admit the blu-ray transmitters themselves aren't as sophisticated which is another reason why i'm doing this to work with wi-fi they call this the linwi or lnwi this basically is a little device that plugs into any local net panel much like one of these over here and will convert my Digitrack system into a, into a Wi-Fi control system that I can operate with a disused cell phone or a I, or an, or an, a tablet or an iOS device of some kind. Or basically, I should say pretty much any kind of Android and iOS device from what I have seen that meets the basic requirements. So tonight's video, I'm going to install this thing and see exactly if it's really worth whatever what it seems to be. <clears throat> First step, of course, is to take this bag apart and see what we got. Okay, so now getting all this set up to go, removing the kit, as you see I've now cleaned a little space up for this to sit, but right now at the corner of my layout, toward the back where I usually wind up having to take these darn things and where they usually wind up getting dropped, I've now removed the instructions and the panel out over here. Here's the unit itself. It doesn't look like they gave me a local net cable, or did they? Oh yes they did, right here. So it includes everything to get started. You got your local net cable right here, which I'm going to put right into that connection up there. I'm surprised that this is not in that one. It should really be. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cable out of its bag and put that in there. With the device unhooked, untied partly. You see, I left it partly wrapped because I like to keep the wires organized as much as possible. I'm just going to plug this one end into my loco net panel and this end into the unit Making itself it by not doing things right. So right now on the top of the unit, as we can see, ah, here it is in the back, there's actually a pass-through, it looks like, for this, in terms of the loco net. So I'm assuming that this is just works the same way as anything else. I can just plug it through one end, which would be this end over here. Okay, I'm just going to push that in place. There we go. Then I'm going to take my power harness thingy right over here, adapter, and plug that into the side, and then find a source to plug this into the plug into. And I'll pick it up from there. Okay, so here is the finished product, as you can, or at least how it's going to be for the time being. I'll eventually screw this down once I decide where it gets the best Wi-Fi reception. Again, this works much like a Wi-Fi wireless access point, I should say. It's going to send a Wi-Fi signal out, and I don't know how it's going to work best for me. Assuming somewhere in this direction. Anyway, I'm going to leave it again like this, and whichever way, and um, mess with it until I find the best place for it. I'm assuming this will work well enough, but until I know for sure, I'm not going to screw it down. For the time being, it'll be like that, and as you can see, I've run the wires down through the board. I've also hooked the low cone net again up to my panel. So this should be all set to go. I just need to get a few last things together. Okay, the next step is to basically get yourself some sort of Android device. This can literally be any kind of device that's ever been it that uh, basically is associated with Android at one point or another. Even if it's been decommissioned, like an old cell phone or a tablet, anything basically that runs Android and supports the minimal requirements will work. What I have here in this case is an old, uh, as you can tell by how badly the screen is, dirt, how filthy the screen is, it's an old a LG Stylo 1. I'm going to go ahead and install the app, and if you can make it out here, it's called 
Engine driver throttle. So I'm going to go ahead now and install that. And from and then we'll go on to the next step, which is to get this thing to talk to the to talk to my talk to the Linfi to make it work correctly. While I wait for this download to finish, I should also mention this will work with iOS devices, but because I have an extra Android device laying around, that's what I'm going to use. Now, because of how terrible the brightness was on that last on that last attempt I did with that older phone, we'll do it with this one one more time. We'll, and I'll, I guess I'll post. I'll see how which one came out better. The first thing you're going to do, obviously, to get everything set up, is to open up the Engine Driver app, and it's going to ask you for all kinds of permissions. It needs the location, the needs to access the location data so it can different. Um, differentiate the different Wi-Fi networks. Again, we're hooking to a Wi-Fi network, not a Bluetooth network, so we have to give it permission for that. So we also give it storage permissions so it can keep its preferences in place so it knows where you what you do every time. Nothing to worry about there, it just needs to get enabled. Again, if this is an old cell phone that you're not going to really use in real life, it doesn't matter too much because it can only access things when you actually turn the Wi-Fi on. The same story if it's a tablet without... Um, without um, a cell network to it. Now, pardon me for stopping right there, but as you see, now we've gone through all this, we've gone through all those permissions. Now we go to the, now we go to the theme and style. I'm gonna choose high contrast. Actually, let me go to the outline theme and see how that looks, because I did the one with that. The big thing is that you probably have a few of these units available, so you can literally probably get away with setting up a few different devices and see which one works the best for you. It doesn't take a lot of power to run this. Next, I've got a few different options for throttles. There's a simple table throttle. What I'm going to go with is the vertical thr throttle, two throttles, which is what I set the other one for. Let's see here. Do I have the... Nah, I'd prefer to have the two throttles because I like to have two trains at one point under control at the same time. Click Next to confirm this. <clears throat> Speed, sliders, and buttons. Choose how you want to control the train. The speeds of your trains, you can use sliders or buttons. Slider buttons not possible with big buttons. I'm going to use the standard option here with the sliders and buttons. Just going to hit next on that. And now we move on to the final step with all this stuff set up. All we have to do now is actually get the system to talk to the network, which I'll now go into. Okay, I have turned on the LinFi system, which is now sending out a signal. Next, I'm going to see about it displaying the Wi-Fi signal I need. I need to now go and connect to the proper server to make all this work. Now back at the menu screen here, we see again it's saying that um, it has detected something. It's found this... Um, the Wi-Fi connection we connected to, which is the DTX LIN server, which is for the LINFI. We're going to click on that and connect to that. Now I'm going to allow Engine Driver to make and manage phone calls. This is mainly just to stop the system from... If you have a cell phone, this is more critical, but I'm going to let it allow it anyway because I don't have cell service up here. If the cell phone is still active, this will allow the throttle to disengage and take phone calls. I'm just going to allow it anyway. <laughs> And there we are. So the throttles have both appeared. As you remember, I selected the dual throttle setup. Now I'm going to turn my track power on. Okay, as you heard, my layout has sprung to life. 111 is now running by herself. I want to stop 111 and get her out of the way so I can get this train out of here. So let me actually try to acquire that one. So let's hit that one and go... Oh, it's stalled. Uh oh. That's not good. I had this thing. I forgot to have this engine on the track and powered on. The reason why this is running, I should mention, is because I had it set to run last time I was running it. So let's now acquire control of that one. One, one, one. Acquire. And now the other one is there. Let's try that one more time. One, one, one. Acquire. I'd select to take control of that one. That's weird, it's not letting me do that. Hmm. Okay, not sure what happened. I can't get control of 111, but I can get control of 8103, which is down there. See, right now I got it, I can hit the bell. That's this engine right over here. 
throw the horn on it. I can throttle it up too. I did want to speed up, so that's one thing. Let's see if I can select this engine again. Let's try this again and see if I can get one, this 111 under control. Okay, another update on this Linfi device. One, as you see, I did get it working pretty well. I've got this engine now actually running on that device. But I did find a few quirks on this thing. To start with, as you, as I, uh, I'll, well, you probably know the first ones, but I'll just go over what I have. To start with, you can only address two devices at a time with this particular throttle setup. If you want to change the address, you have to physically stop the train. So in other words, right now, as you see, this throttle is actually shut down. I have it in the MRC shutdown mode. So if I want to change this model, I can't do anything. I can touch this all I want. It won't change. You have to physically stop the train, which in this case it already is stopped. And then you can go up here and change it. And you have to release this address first to get that to work. It's really, really bizarre how that all functions. The other thing is, I still cannot get it to talk to this particular engine, the Win5 system. My 111 over here, which is my HodgePodge RS1, if you will. I tried. I did my first sound conversion with an MRC decoder on this. But for an RS1, I wanted one so badly, so I went and tried it myself, and it didn't work too well. And anyway, this engine itself works fine, fine, but will not address this. As you see, again, I'll type in it several, which you can see here is 111. So I'll go again, 111, hit, hit, hit acquire, and it just says select. It does not come up at all. When you acquire it, it should come here, and it's not doing that. I can do this until the end of the night, all night long, and it still will not detect it. And yes, I'm sure it's on the right address. It's the long address, which it automatically flips over to. We'll try that now, too, just to, just to show you. 111, acquire. And again, it goes back to select. It's not detecting this engine at all. I don't know why. And I thought it may think, well, it's an MRC decoder. Maybe that's the problem. But that engine over there, number 1624, as you see, I've parked back here. I'm about to come around the other side because I have the ability to do that now, which is another cool feature. This is completely wireless, as it's supposed to be. This engine here, this Alco FA that I've pulled down here, with the passenger cars, and yes, I understand they never the FAs never really pulled passenger cars. The FA ones never did, and that's what this is. Anyway, I pulled this one down here without a problem. It's an MRC decoder again, and it had no issue. It just worked, no problem at all. And yet, and yet, I can't get this thing to talk to the 111, which is the strangest thing I've ever seen. I've also encountered a power problem. I'm probably gonna have to take these old switches out. These things are just prehistoric. These are old Atlas switches of that design. They're the original Atlas switches, which basically were bought out by a few different Eastern European manufacturers that took over their manufacturing production, and they're not as good as they used to be. And they use these staples right here in the middle just to show you how cheaply made they are. If you look carefully, you'll see staples right there. They actually have to be there. This is what transfers the power between the tracks. I have a feeling one of these has failed, and I would try to fix this, but the fact is I know this switch is only going to cause me more problems. The reason why I haven't changed this in the past is because it has the old-style motor on it. <laughs> as you can see here. So if I were to change this out, I would have to really, literally pull the motor off and everything else. But I think I'm ready to make the change on that. So anyway, this do does it work? Yes, it does. It's very nice to have the freedom, but the fact is it's not going to replace all of my throttles. But to be honest, this is really what I was looking for at minimal. There aren't other throttle programs I'll give a shot with, but uh, not as hope not as not as, not as flexible as I thought. I can only switch between two engines at a time. I can't have any more than that many throttles up. And again, you're limited to those two engines. If you want to, if you want to change throttles on this control, you have to physically stop the engine it's running to take control of another engine. That's another thing I'd like to try here. I've got 8356 running. Let's see if I can switch that one off here without having to do anything else. If I acquire that by my other controllers, let's see what that does. Yep, and that would work. So what I did there is I just put 83. 56, which is this RS3 running there on my other one of my other wired throttles, and it then released it from here. So basically, the trick is I can only talk to two trains at a time. If I want to physically swap engines, either I, I in order to avoid having to actually stop them, I have to take I have to steal them. Basically, is what we is the technical term used for this with another throttle, and basically use that to take control of the engine itself. Or if not, I have to bring it to a complete stop, which is kind of awkward. 
So anyway, it works pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with what this does. It's just too bad it is a little bit more flexible. I still don't know why it won't talk to this engine here. This, well, admittedly, it's an ugly duckling, but still, it should, it should have some reason to communicate with it. But anyway, pretty, pretty nice product. I like how this works. I guess I'll just have to look around for better throttles. Overall, I call this a pretty successful thing, and I guess if someone else is look, watching this is definitely looking for a cheap way of getting wireless locomotives without a te tether or just wants to add another throttle to the Digitrack system, this comes in cheaper. Because all you have to do is, if, as long as you have some kind of iOS or Android device laying around the house, you can spend 60, you can pay about 80 bucks for this little thing, and Viola, you've got an extra throttle, and it's a Wi-Fi throttle you can use anywhere. Hey folks, I just wanted to clarify one thing I actually found out after messing around with the settings. What I did here is, I'll just go back actually and show you where I got this set up there. No, I don't want to do that. Um, if you go into the settings menu right up here, I'll show you how to get rid of that issue I was having with the way you select the locomotive. Into preference, you can actually choose whether the engine is selectable when it's moving or not. If you scroll all the way down here, or was it further up? There we go. Yeah, stop on, stop on phone call. No, that's under there. There we go. Stop on direction change, and there it is. Here it is. Drop a locomotive before acquiring and allow locomotive while selecting while moving. If you check these options off, which I have this one set to, it'll let you do that. You can also roster recent locomotives, which you definitely want to do because it'll remember what locomotives you switched between and a few other little features I've turned on. But yeah, just to show you, you can enable it. You just have to go into pre advanced pref uh, preferences and select the options and scroll all the way down to locomotive select preferences. It's a little convoluted, but it is available and it does make a big difference. Uh, yep, and then there are a whole bunch of other options to select in here and get everything else working, but basically, yeah, that's another nice little feature feature on this thing. You can get around it, you just have to dig into the preferences to make all of that work. Just to show you, I've got now two throttles working. I've got that other cell phone which needed serious updates running. That's hooked up to a switcher on the other layout over there. And then I have these two throttled up over here. So I'll stop number 81, uh, 81, uh, 03 right now. Couple of advantages to so this, you can actually scroll down and get all the functions for your locomotive. So if you have the new super addressable engines, you can get all 20, uh, 25, I think it is, addresses displayed to you, or 32 it is, displayed right up front, which is a very nice little touch. Now, as for the quirk I was having, I figured out what it is. It has to do with an engine that has too few address numbers, and I actually found it out on this engine here, uh, with this particular one in particular, in this mode. If your address number is 3 and below, it will not address for some reason. So let's go to this engine, for example. I'll type in address 111, again, to try to take control of this, and I get an error. Cannot acquire address. It says it's a long address, even though it's a short address. And the system yet switches to long every time I try to enter it. So it looks like that might be a bug in the particular throttle software I'm using. So engines like this one right over here, 111, won't work. I also tried on my Louisville and Nashville RS3109. That didn't work either. But on other engines, such as this one over here, just to show you the difference, if we go back here, let me actually bring up this other engine. 1167 sitting right over here on the right. As you can see, now that will respond, and it will function. So it appears to have something to do with the short addresses on that particular throttle software. So I have to experiment with new kinds of throttle software. There's, there are quite a few different companies doing throttle software for this. There's also JMRI. There's a free version. There's a paid version of that. Let me actually right now back these tri these cars back into the siding. Oh, I see why. Well, I forgot to set the switch back. That's why this derailed. I had this switch closed. Let's go ahead now and back this guy up here again. Just follow my engine back in. So, in short, this does work. It works really well. It's just the, so the throttle software, which is not, at, which is outside of Digitrax control, seems to have a problem. At least this version I'm running, the engine driver software I've been using, just doesn't like three number addresses. It just can't tell the difference between a short address and a long address. And it'll correct it for a long address, but then when it does that, it comes back and says error short address. So. Obviously, there's some kind of software bug in this. I'm not sure it was ever patched because I think the software has been around for a while. That'll do it for this video. As always, keep the metal side down.